Hi, I'm Callum from Time Valley Motorhomes and today I'll be doing the handover on the Bersner XEO 585. So at the back of the passenger side, you have your cassette loo, which opens with the, the Bersner key. And to operate your cassette loo, make sure the blade is closed on the bottom bowl of the toilet. Then lift the handle and you'll be able to pull it out. Once you've pulled it out, you do have a handle so you can drag it around the site when it's full if it's too heavy to carry. And then if you go to your waste disposal point, which is normally behind or beside your showering block, toilet block, and then to empty, you take the cap off, press the green button at the back which allows a bit of air in, stops, stops it glugging and gives it a consistent flow. Tip it away once you've tipped it out, put, there's normally a tap, put some water in, give it a rinse, tip out again and then if you are using the chemical, fill this up with your chemical then tip it in here, your green or your blue chemical or if you're using the tablet form which are in the sachets, put a pint of fresh water back in the cassette, push it back into the vehicle and then drop one down the toilet and that'll break up into the liquid. Coming further down the vehicle, you've got your mains hook up point here. So to hook up, you lift the collar, slide it on, and to unhook if you just press that little blue catch here to unhook. Always hook the vehicle up first and then your side, as we wouldn't want you walking around with a faulty lead or a live lead in the wet. And then this is for your Truma boiler. So this must be kept obstruction free at all times and it just allows the fumes out from the boiler and water heater. Coming further down, you put your water. So this is your fresh water intake. So again, this will open with the, the burst and the key. And then get a hose pipe put your hose pipe in there until it either overflows and you've got enough and you've got a full tank of water on board or you can see inside the level of water on board if you are going wild camping you will have to take a full tank of water with you but if you're not and you're going to a site you tend to take a maximum of 20 litres as this gives you a better payload and, a, and increases your consumption for the engine coming further down the vehicle so this is your diesel filler with, which opens with the main ignition key. You put it in there, turn. And then this lifts off, you fill with diesel, and then you can tighten this back on. And in the passenger door, you do have your tyre pressures on the slam panel there. So five bar at the front, which is 72.3 psi, and five and a half bar at the back, which is 79.5 psi at the rear. Underneath the seat here, as a tool kit, so this has got everything you need to change your wheel. So it's got a jack and a brace, a tow knife, and a screwdriver. And underneath this panel here in the floor is where your engine battery is situated. So if you ever need to change the engine battery in the future, this is where you get in from here to lift the battery through the cab. And to open your bonnet, it's on the passenger dashboard there. Then you can open the bonnet up here. So this here is your earth for earthing your jump lead on, so this is where your black jump lead would go for giving or receiving, and your red one would just go back here underneath the plus on the cap, if you just lift that up, this is where your red jump lead would go for, for boosting or jumping the battery. Coming further along, you've got your weight plate, so it's 3.5, but this is the state weight plate, there will be a first no weight plate and then you put your paint code here so if you ever need anything for the golden white which is code 5 or 6 for touch of pen or paint that's the paint code then you've got your oil filler and your dipstick for checking your levels and then you've got your brake fluid car steering fluid coolant and the main one you're going to need which is your screen wash for your washer jets also at the back of the passenger side you do have underneath your cassette 
your wastewater drain off. So this is any water you've put down a plug hole in the vehicle will go into a separate holding tank and then once you've finished your trip away on the way out of your campsite, you drive over a motorhome service bay, drive over a grid or as close to it as you can. On some smaller sites it will just be a gully or a hole in the ground and simply turn this here and that is just your wastewater draining off. In the winter it's very important that you let the water out of here, the fresh and the boiler, as this is called the winterization process and you must leave the vehicle completely dry of water which I'll explain when we're in the vehicle. So also behind the driver's door this is your weight plate so it's three and a half ton gross vehicle weight if you were to put a tow bar on and tow anything you can tow up to a train weight not exceeding 5.5 ton and then you've got your front and back axle weights on here as well it is quite hard to see through the camera but you can see it in person on the vehicle and then you do have your lock out underneath your long bench seat here and in here you'll find this is just an extension hose for the waste water pipe so this clips on the end and this means that you can decart your water further should you not be able to get to the grid or hole in the ground you've got your winding handle here for your bike rack and you've got some storage in there as well coming to the back coming further down the vehicle you've got your step which will only work when the main control panel is on so you've got to have the control panel on which I'll show you inside which is up here and then you've got in and out for the step to go and then further back this is your LPG locker this is your gas locker so in here you can fit two bottles and it so always make sure that the bottles are securely strapped in when you're on the road and turned off as if you are in a collision it's far easier for the bottles to be turned off and then to get the pigtail on the bottle it's just a left hand thread to tighten and then turn on and off at the top of the bottle vehicle you do have your bike rack so you need your bike rack wind your handle here clip it on to there like so and then wind you need to loosen these straps off as well the straps on both sides one here one here you need to loosen them off them off like so, pull the strap through and then click the little catch so, and then mind your bike rack down the wind And then wind it down and then you will just have to move it you pull your, the rail back and then your two bikes fit on here so wheels put these through the spokes and then these clip on through the crossbar then you can adjust this at any height so you can wind it further down to get the bikes on or you can wind it up or you wind it up and you've got the bikes on and you're ready to start traveling. You would then the security strap back around the bars. So once inside the vehicle, this is your main control panel. So to turn on, you've got on and off. So you've got 12 volt. And this will then put your 12 volt leisure battery on and it will indicate if you are on hookup or not. So this is bringing 240 volts in, main power supply. And then you do have your van, so you've got the battery at the front, 
which then gives you your voltage which is your Fiat engine battery and the battery at the back which is your leisure battery which gives you a reading up there as well coming over here you've got your wastewater and you've got your fresh water and then you've got your pump here so this is this you have to put on to use the toilet the tap and the shower obviously if there's no water on board don't put this on as it can burn the element out in the pump and it will alarm as well when the water level or battery levels do get low and to drain your fresh water off so i've showed you how to drain your waste off outside this is how to drain your fresh out so these are your traveling seats in the back if you remove the cushions and lift the hatch this is your fresh water on board tank and empty you simply turn this here and this will allow all the fresh water out directly underneath the chassis and you do have access by turning the red cover off in the tank for cleaning should you wish also underneath the wardrobe is where you will find your boiler so this is your Truma boiler on this vehicle it holds 10 litres of water at any one time in the winter it's very important that you let this 10 litres of water out and to do so you've got to toggle down here so it's a yellow toggle tap when it's lying down like so it's holding water you need to stand it up and the water will directly cascade underneath the chassis leave this up during the time the vehicle is standing to stop any water from freezing inside the boiler otherwise it is very expensive to replace the boiler when the water freezes in it and it isn't covered under warranty unfortunately as it's your responsibility to do so to so drain the boiler down once you've allowed this toggle to stand up make sure your fresh and your waste are open and open all your mixer taps to the middle position of the tap to stop any air from building up and also take your shower hose off Take the head off the shower hose and allow the hose to lie in the shower tray to stop any water from freezing in the shower hose. And that is how you winterize a motorhome. So now in the kitchen, you have your two, or should I say three, gas burners, which require a lighter to light, which I'll light in a second. You've got your sink, which when the pump's on, will operate the tap and your draining board and then above to open all your overhead lockers you just press the button in and slide up and you've got a good amount of storage in there shelving in these two and then below you do have your Dometic fridge so it's off at the moment you've got three sources so you've got gas which you'd use if you're wild camping you've got mains on the plug which is 240 volt when you are hooked up or you've got the battery icon which is when the engine in, is running only so it isn't a feed from your leisure battery it's from the engine battery from the alternator when the engine is running so to choose your source you would choose here so this is gas and it's lighting itself until that was to go green and then you've got the mains which has gone green because it's working on mains electric as we are hooked up on site and then you've got the battery which is showing nothing because it isn't getting a feed for 12 volt so you would use the the gas when well camping the mains hook up so the 240 mains when you are pre cooling the fridge so if you're lucky enough to keep this at home the day or two before if you hook the vehicle up and put your fridge on it'll go nice and cool with your shopping in and then when you are ready to travel you can just pop it on the battery and it should keep the temperature the same when departing and then on the other side you do have your temperature so this is being the coldest all the way to the warmest setting and then in there you do have your little freezer box and fridge during the winterizing process as well if you clean your fridge out take all your shopping out clean it out and the last thing you want to do is close the fridge door as it forms a airtight barrier so if you just prop the door open and allow the air in and out the fridge to stop any mold and funny smells from forming
And there you have your three gas burners lit. Also in your kitchen you've got your Smev oven and grill. So to light you still need to use a igniter. igniter. There you are, there's your oven lit. And then you your hob as well. There's your grill lit as well. Like so. Underneath your sink is your cutlery drawer, but there's also these red taps here, which are your gas isolation taps. Any problems with gas, always isolate at the top of the bottle. These are mainly for when the vehicle is habitation serviced, so a technician will test your gas appliances and make sure they are all working accordingly and to the regulations that are set in place. Also in the kitchen, you'll find your controls for your Truma Combi Boiler. So you've got two controls, so you've got your what you want to heat, so your van or your water. So you've got off on the little O here. You've got heating your water at 60 degrees on the top. So you'd use this for your dishes or 40 degrees for showering, so that's heating your water at 40 degrees and 60 degrees at the top. Off in the middle, the gas flame is heating only, so if you've got no water on board, you put on the gas flame on its own and heat the vehicle. Or if you want heating and hot water together, you turn down the very bottom one, and you'll see the gas flame and 60 degrees of water. So this is heating the water at 60 degrees as well as heating the van. Below you've got your energy source selection. So at the top, very top you've got two wiggly lines. This is two kilowatts of power. So when hooked up, you can use two kilowatts of power. If you're on a smaller site, you may be asked to use one kilowatt of power, which is one wiggly line. If you're while camping and you do not have any electric, you'd go on a gas on its own, which is a gas flame. Or you've got the mixture settings at the bottom, which is one kilowatt, so one wiggly line and gas. Or you've got two wiggly lines and gas, which you'd use in the winter should you want to heat the water quicker or heat the vehicle. But mainly, if you've paid your side fees, you'd use just electric on its own. And now in your washroom area, to operate your toilet, press the blue button for your flush. And then to deposit your waste and flush into the cassette, you slide, so always use the toilet with the blade open. Flush and then close it. This has to be closed to get the cassette out of the exterior of the vehicle. If it's open, the cassette won't come out. And then you've got your sink. So there your water. Your water's getting nice and warm there. Got your bathroom light here, storage for your toilet rays, and then make sure when you are traveling that your shower screens are tied back at the top and the bottom, but then you can loosen it off and block the toilet off when showering in the vehicle. We've got more toilet rig cupboards. Put your shower screen there, shower hose. So when winterizing as well, so if you always leave all your mixer taps, so from the kitchen, the shower and the hand basin in the middle position and open, it stops any air from building up. But if you also take the shower head off and allow the hose to lie in the shower tray, as, as you can see, the water will coil in here and this could freeze and potentially break your shower hose. And then above you do have your skylights. So you've got two of these, you've got one in here and one out in the kitchen area and they're both the same. So if you press the button in, slide it along or you can put it into grooves should it be a nice day. Always make sure these are shut when traveling. Don't travel with them open as they're just plastic and they can just be ripped off the vehicle. You've got a fly screen 
and a blackout blind for on an evening. So to drop the bed, so this is a double bed from the ceiling. Use the catch, push up, turn, and then you'll be able to pull the bed down to its lowest point there. Always make sure that the cushions below are lying down as they can sometimes obstruct the lockers pulling the bed down and then you do have your ladder underneath the mattress and your necks which will clip in to stop people from rolling out of bed young children during the night and you also do have a switch in that corner there and a net so you can turn these spotlights on so whoever's in the bed can turn them on and off on an evening and they make the bed at the bottom so if you place the table into the middle push down push it into the bottom and then on the bottom of the table there is a lever here so turn it to the front and that'll keep it in place and then you would fill the space so you put your backrest in the middle And this is how the bed would make up once the table is dropped. So you'd use your backrests from this side and this side and put them across the van. So this is the base cushion from this long seat here and the back the backrest from the seat as well. So you put them in the middle and then place your backrests in there and then there is your double bed made. Now in the front of the cab, so your handbrake is to your right. You've got your adjustment for your electric windows and adjustment for your mirrors on the front. So you've got two mirrors on either side, so top and the blind spot. You've got your headlight adjustment and your mode, which changes the date and time. And then on the side, this is this indicates so if this is lit up, your steps out. Once it's in, it will go off. So it's just an indicator that if you're on site and you're about to drive off and this is lit, he steps out so stop go at the back pull it in and you're ready to drive off on the end of the wiper store you've got your trip computer so this will tell you your miles per gallon your range your instant consumption and average consumption and traveling times you've got your lights and your indicators on here and cruise control on the bottom it's a six speed manual gearbox so you lift the collar and go into reverse and then you'll hear your sensors kick in ASR off is turning your traction control off so it's anti-slip slip relief so you turn that off if you're stuck on a wet pitch or wet grass and you'll get the little indicator on in the corner there that looks like a, a wheel spinning so you can get off this locks the cabs doors and unlocks them on a night hazard lights fog lights which are rear and heated mirrors You've got a glove bin which is lockable with a the key there and then you do have your temperature your fan speed must be on at least one or more for the aircon to work you've got your distribution so where you want the air to go to and either recirculating air within the vehicle or bringing fresh air in above you do have your radio which is a pioneer head unit so it's just an fm radio so if you turn it on by just pressing the wheel here you can then search for your search for your channel and then press one to six to save or you can press again the wheel it's got an auxiliary so you put a 3.5 milli jack in there and connect your device or you can go to cd should there be a cd in there and the head unit also pops out so should you be storing the vehicle you can take this out you've got two 12 volt points there and a ashtray which you can use for spare change or pens and there you do have your glove box and you've got your tone eye and you've got your radio 
case for your head unit. Front, your fascia, and then to black this out on an evening, you'd use your screens, which are just located up here, and these have got press studs on, and they'll press stud on the windscreen and on the side of your doors there.